I warm welcome to present Professor R. Anita Mam, Professor in Business Management and Controller of Examinations in Saint Joseph Degree and PG College, Hyderabad, Telangana. She has 24 years of teaching experience, including industry experience. She awarded the Best Faculty Award for HRM in the Ambition Award function for. Education Excellence 2020 by Ambition Organization. She also received Luminary Award in Leadership from International Journal of Academy and Industry Research, Philippines, on 4th December 2021. She has been honored with again Best Faculty Award for the Academic Excellence for the Academic Year of by Vivekananda College of Arts and Science for Women, Tamil Nadu. She organized. 25 seminars, workshops, conferences, and participated in 120 international national seminars. And research part, she presented 50 papers in various international and national seminars and published 57 papers in various national and international journals and chapter in books. She co-authored five books. She has published several poems. She is currently engaged in the major research project funded by the Indian Council of Social Science Research. Now I invite Professor Anita Ma'am to deliver her session. Welcome you, Ma'am. Thank you, thank you, Vasanthi Ma'am, for introducing me. Good afternoon, all of you, uh, to this uh, talk on UGC guidelines for curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate programs. I hope all are able to see the screen. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, thank you. So, good afternoon, participants. So, before I go for the guidelines, I wish to bring to your notice that what is the philosophy of higher education? Why UGC has to come out with this curriculum? As you know, that higher education is based on four important pillars: that is, the knowledge enhancement, seeking the truth, promoting critical thinking. And conserving our culture. So, based on this philosophy, UGC has come out with a curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate programs. The talk that I am going to uh, make is related to this uh, guidelines, which has been given by UGC. Now, all the education institutions, especially higher education institutions, are responsible for preparing the students so that they can be ready for the globalized economy. right and now we are seeing the recession how it is happening and then how to uh, no uh, overcome this situation if we are able to produce those students uh, where they are fit for this globalized economy under whatever circumstances then we need to give a holistic curriculum now this holistic curriculum development which emphasizes on soft skills experiential learning and it also should give a global exposure to the students and also inculcate in them the lifelong learning right so given this 21st century requirements where we need to produce the students right who are good at thought and who are well grounded who are creative who have critical thinking right because this is very very important because we need to uh, produce those youth who are socially conscious and then who are cultured so that our nation has these type of people who are humane in nature why the reason behind us we need to uphold the liberty equality fraternity and justice should be given to all so taking this as a background nep 2020 has been uh, the UGC has come out with this NEP 2020 guidelines where we will be able to develop such type of youth to the country. Now we all know that national education policy that is 2020, which focuses on multiple things, right? So starting with the holistic education and then motivating the faculty and then giving teacher education on one side. and also trying to see that where we are able to use technology and integrate the technology in education where it talks about the governance how we have to restructure and consolidate it and then taking into consideration about a culture where we need to promote the languages arts and culture and then how we need to see that we have a proper regulatory system and then how we are going to promote research is very very important where we have to come out with new knowledge 
and then it also focuses on professional education and the vocational education now these are the various uh, aspects on which nep 2020 focuses on and we know about it now my uh, talk will be focused on how we can provide holistic education through the curriculum that we develop for the ug undergraduate programs now in accordance with this this UGC has come out with curriculum and credit framework for undergraduate programs, where this particular undergraduate program focuses on flexible curriculum, choice-based credit system, multiple dis multidisciplinary approach. We have multiple entry and exit, and also re-entry options are there. Now, why these things? NEP has come out with that because we want to see that the students pursue their career path with they like, with their interest and with the subject they choose. That is the main interest so that based on their capabilities, right, they will be able to pursue the career. Now, my presentation outlines the principles, NAP principles. What are the transformative initiatives that have been taken from the curriculum point of view? And what are the new curriculum framework features are there? And what is the eligibility condition duration of the program and the various concepts that are there, their meaning of it? and what this credit hours means. And then what are the outcomes which the higher education need to focus on, right? We are talking about outcome-based education, right? Now, what are these outcomes that the higher education focuses on? Because this particular UGC curriculum focuses on all those outcomes which are necessary right now for the youth. And then what's the structure? A basic structure is being given by UGC where it incorporates various types of courses and the credits, minimum credits that UGC has given to us. And the levels of courses, like you no, know, which level of courses need to be offered at various, uh, you know, at different years of study. And then how we need to assess them. Right. And then the grading pattern also was being given by UGC and how to calculate the CGP also. I think most of the uh, uh, colleges which are there already into the grading system, then uh, they know the calculation of it. But still, I would like to give a view which UGC has mentioned in the guidelines. Now, coming to the principles, NEP principles, which gives thrust on the curricular aspects at various stages of the higher education. It focuses on eight important aspects. One is how we are able to recognize, identify, and foster these capabilities in each of the student who are there in the higher education. Because when we speak about the holistic education, we need to understand initially what are the capabilities that are there for every student in the class. Then what is the flexibility that we are offering to the learners? Because they need to choose their career path based on their talent and interest. Third aspect principle, which is considered multidisciplinary, which we are speaking nowadays, that how we can incorporate this multidisciplinary aspect or multidisciplinary courses in the curriculum and the holistic education. Because now NEP is trying to see that how they can integrate the sciences, the arts, the humanities into the STEM. That is the uh, from the science point of view, technology point of view, engineering point of view, mathematics point of view how all these things are integrated. So this is what UGC uh, wants to focus on. The fourth important concept is conceptual understanding rather than trying to buy hard the things and then write the question answer. Instead of that, they are trying to see how to inculcate this understanding of the concept in the minds of the students. Second thing is how to promote this critical thinking how we can do it, how we can have you know, case, case lets and case situations, making them to think innovatively. And so that they can take a decision when they face these things in the you know, office. And then ethics and human and constitutional values and life skills. This is what the NEP is insisting on, because these helps them to have better leadership skills, better coordination skills, better teamwork, better interpersonal skills, better communication. Then they can be also resilient to whatever situations, how the economy is doing, how they can be resilient. These things they teach them. OK, so that is the reason NEP emphasizing on that. And then fifth principle is extensive use of technology. Now, I would like to give an example, like especially it's not just for uh, uh, students, but different categories of students, including Divyang students. 
Now, Divyang, we know that this has been first popularized by our prime minister, right? Talking in a positive way. If you see, the faculty also need to be trained. This is an example like how uh, no Ministry of Education is trying to give an online uh, training to the teachers in order to cater to the needs of the Divyang students, right? So we should see, so NEP emphasizes on how to extensively use this technology so that a greater access is there for all of them, trying to remove the language barriers and making it accessible, the material accessible to all of them. So for that, we need to have a proper planning and integrate the technology with our curriculum. Then sixth one is respect for diversity and respect, especially for local context, right? It's not div just diversity, but also locally, yes, when we train our students, they should be able to place or get employable in the local, right? So we need to know that how to incorporate these things in the curriculum. When we teach the pedagogy that we use, we need to incorporate that. And the policies when we are framing to also need to take it into consideration. The seventh one is the equity and inclusion. Now, equity, it means that we are going to treat all of them equally and we ensure that the high quality of education is available to all. Right. And the last one is rootedness and pride in India. Now, this is what where we are talking about Indian knowledge systems, IKS. Right. So UGC has also come out of the guidelines how to train the faculty on IKS and how to incorporate this Indian knowledge system into the higher education. So UGS, UGC has come out with these guidelines also. And then in order to promote the rich, diverse, ancient, and modern culture, the languages, the traditions, right? So NEP has come out with certain principle where it can be incorporated into the curriculum for that. So these are the eight principles on which Right, this curriculum should be based on as per NEP. Now, let us see what are the uh, transformative initiatives that NEP uh, no, uh, uh, emphasizes on in the higher education. First thing, as we discussed, it should be holistic, taking into all the aspects and multidisciplinary. Second thing is we should have flexible curricular structures. How to have flexible curricular structures? As we go to the next slides, I'll be explaining to you. Then third thing is, which is very, very important, where the UGC is insisting on a three or a four year duration, where we have multiple entry and exit and as well as re-entry. Right? It's a very challenging thing. Right. Now, what are these multiple entry and exit points and re-entry options? Now, uh, UG, UG certificate will be given after completing the first year, that is two semesters of study in whatever subjects or fields that you have chosen or disciplines you have chosen. But again, there are conditions. When you are giving the certificate, it's not just doing the subjects, right? So what are those? As we proceed further, I'll be telling you in detail. The second thing is the UG diploma. After two years, that is four semester study, you need to take it. Uh, you will be getting that if you want to leave or exit, right? After three years, if you want to exit the program of study, that is after six semesters, you're going to, going to get a bachelor degree. Right. And if you're going to exit after four years, that is the honors. If you're going to do research, it is called as honors with research. If you're just going to do four years degree, it is called as honors, where uh, you'll not be doing a project here. You'll be doing uh, three papers of 12 credits. You can do it so that you're going to get a, a four year bachelor degree honors. Now, there's again a condition over there. When you move from a uh, bachelor degree to you want to get a honor degree, a student who is going to get 75 percentage and above marks are only eligible for the four year degree, not all the students. So that, that is a condition that has been levied by UGC when they want to go for a honors degree. Now, this is the third transformative initiative which the higher education uh, with the NEP envisages are in the higher education. The fourth one is environmental education is mandatory. Now, it also specified what this environmental education, the areas which it had. It has also come out with, UGC has come out with certain guidelines and also it has come out with the syllabi, right? So the edu environmental education which we are going to give to the students should mandatorily focus on the climate, the pollution, waste management, then biological diversity, biological resources, biodiversity, sanitation, 
forest and wildlife conservation and sustainable development the sdg goals and living now these are the mandatory areas which ugc is insisting on right you have also the curricula which has been given by ugc you can go through that and then fifth one is the transformative uh, um, role is the value based education it's mandatory that every ug program should have uh, a, a paper related to value education now this value education should include the development of humanistic ethical constitutional universal human values which is related to truth righteousness peace love scientific temper life skills all these things it should include it and then the sixth one is community service which is mandatory right so we need to make the students uh, so that to participate in community related programs so that they have uh, the holistic education because this should be a part of that right so you can introduce as non credit program courses where this should be mandatory uh, but no credits can be given right it is not added into the cgpa you can have that way but make making uh, sure that the students participate in the community service program we have to see that the seventh one which is uh, insisted upon global citizenship and education for sustainable development this is very very important because when we are speaking that higher education need to go for a they should we should prepare students for a globalized economy because we need to see that peace tolerant inclusive security sustainable societies we need to form for that they need youth need to be educated right for that is the reason it should incorporate these things and then eighth one is opportunities for internship now you need to make sure that the students who are going to come out of this ug program they undertake an internship program in local industry it can be businesses it can be artists crafts person so they can be employed yes they can uh, be guided by the faculty within the institution or any other higher institution faculty can also guide them because when they do this internship they'll be getting a practical side of their learning and which will help them to get placed that is it improves their employability for that reason the internship should be a part of the ug program the ninth aspect is reorienting teaching programs now we need to see that multidisciplinary aspect is taken into uh, consideration that is we need to develop the capabilities across various disciplines the students it can be sciences social sciences arts humanities languages or it can be in art philosophy dance theater statistics those programs which is not having statistics trying to incorporate statistics pure sciences sports so we are trying to see that uh, to give the subjects that are needed for uh, their holistic development that is multidisciplinary in nature so we need to create a stimulating learning environment where students are able to learn them right so these are the eight as uh, nine aspects on which NEP uh, has come out. These are called as transformative initiatives, which NEP has envisages upon. Right now, not only this, uh, NEP is also telling that we need to prepare professionals for the latest developments, technological developments that are happening. That is the artificial intelligence, 3D machining, big data analytics, machine learning, right, genomic studies, biotechnology, nanotechnology, neuroscience. Now, all these also we need to prepare the professionals, right? And then they should be able to apply to their health, whatever the latest thing they are studying, to the environment as well as sustainable living. Because if they learn these things, they'll be able to use these areas, which is very, very important, right? Now, the new curriculum framework will be having the following features, right? The first thing is, they'll be having an opportunity for learners to choose the courses of their interest in all disciplines right second thing is multiple entry and exit options which you are having which i've already shared with you third thing is the flexibility to move from one discipline to another discipline we need to give the flexibility fourth uh, aspect is flexibility for learners to move from one institution to another institution right and fifth aspect is flexibility to switch from one mode of learning to another mode of learning so these are the important features of new curriculum framework
Now, UGC also has put in place the regulations for academic bank of credit because when we are moving from one institution to another institution and when we are having multiple entries and multiple exits, right? These guidelines are very, very important. So UGC has already uh, created a base with these guidelines. Now, what is the uh, what are the different aspects that we need to know when we talk about the program? So let us see the duration, the eligibility, and the aspects. Now, when you're talking about the semester system, now we know that there are two semesters in a year, and these semesters should comprise 90 working days, and that is minimum 15 weeks should be there for each semester. And then in between, you need to have a summer term which should be of eight weeks. And this summer vacation should be used for internship or an apprenticeship or work-based vocational education and training. And then if people are going to exit after two semesters, it is mandatory that they do the internship. And then during the summer uh, vacation time, the high, higher education institution can also offer some fast track mode of, mode of teaching the regular courses so that it can enable the students to do additional courses or complete the backlogs in the coursework. So in that way, you can have, you can use the summer vacation for that. Not only that, HEIs can also decide on offering certain courses which will be useful for the students depending upon the availability of the faculty and number of students who are willing to take it up during that summer term. In that way, they can have the summer term for eight weeks between the two semesters, between the two semesters, uh, after the two semesters, right? And then major and minor disciplines. Now, when you are offering a major, now this major discipline courses should be about 50% of the total credits. Suppose the total credits that you're offering is 120, 60 credits should be of the major discipline. Now, when you talk about the minor discipline, minor discipline can also consist of the interdisciplinary courses also. Minimum 10% of the total credit should be for the minor discipline, right? So suppose we tell 120 is the total credits for a program. Yes, so 12 credits should be from for the minor discipline and 12 credits you can have for the interdisciplinary. So like I've given an example over here. Suppose a student is pursuing economics as a major, so minimum 12 credits he has to do for a minor that is statistics if he's taking. So he will be awarded a BA degree with economics as major and minor in statistics. In that way, he can pursue the program. Now, if we are going for a UG degree with a single major, instead of going for two majors or a major or minor, suppose you are going for a single major, the student need to secure minimum 50% of the credits from the major discipline whether if it's a three year or four year. So if it is a four year, you're going to have minimum 160. So 80 credits should be of that particular major. He should be able to secure for that. So that is what I've written as an example. If it's 120 credits, 60 credits he has to secure in the single major, suppose if it's a BSc physics. And suppose they are going for BSc honors in physics, he has to secure eight, at least 80 credits in the physics. That is a single major. Now, suppose we are going for a double major. Then a student need to secure minimum 40% of the credits from the second major discipline. That is a three-year course. Uh, uh, if it is a three-year course, 40% or four-year course, 40% credits in it, uh, the student need to secure, right? So like I've given an example for you here. Suppose if it is a three-year UG program, the total credits should be 120. And a student of physics with minimum 48 credits, he should secure to be awarded uh, BSc physics uh, in a double major, right? And then this is a structure which UGC has given. How, suppose you go for a th three year, uh, uh, no, uh, three year UG degree, minimum, they have said that it should be 120. You can have more than that, but minimum, which UGC is telling that it should be of 120 credits. And suppose you're going for a four year degree that is honor degree, you need to have 160 credits minimum if you go for a honors, right? And then only it is called as a honor degree and it should be a four years. So they have given that major component that is a core paper should be of 60 credits and then here 50% that is 80 here. 
minor stream should be consisting of 24 in that you can have a minor and as well as interdisciplinary can also be taken into this 12 credits can be for uh, interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary should be have we should be having of nine credits ability enhancement courses what are they i'll be talking about this in the further slides eight credits up to eight credits minimum skill enhancement courses nine credits minimum and then value added courses which is common for all the ug programs should be six to eight and then summer internship can be from two credits to four credits it can vary so and then research project when we go for a four-year course you can have a uh, research project or dissertation which will be of here two 12 credits right so this is the basic minimum structure given by ugc suppose if a student uh, does not want to take uh, the research project in the fourth year of 12 credits instead of that he can take three courses worth 12 credits but the degree what he's going to get is the honor degree but if he's going to do research he'll be getting uh, suppose if it is bcom honors bcom honors with research if he does research he'll be getting because honors with research if he does not do research he will be just getting bcom honors after the fourth year now let us see what are those uh, um, no, uh, uh, programs that is when you talk about interdisciplinary what do they mean each one let us discuss multidisciplinary interdisciplinary the other things which i mentioned in the uh, structure what do they mean as i told you interdisciplinary you can go up to 12 credits minimum they are right and then suppose let us take what do you mean by interdisciplinary papers now whatever 12 credits that we are offering right it can be equally distributed among all the disciplines suppose econometrics a degree in econometrics now what are those interdis economics statistics mathematics together gives you a degree of econometrics so your credits can be uh, distributed among all these three disciplines man you are not audible right Am I clear now? Hello? Hello? Vasanthi ma'am, I'm clear now? Yes ma'am, you're, you're audible ma'am. Then I do not know. Somebody is facing some problem. I think they need to check. Yeah. Okay. Fine. So I'll continue. Yeah. So when you're talking about the interdisciplinary UG programs, as I told you, the credits can be distributed among the uh, different discipline that is economics, statistics, and mathematics. Right now, when you talk about multidisciplinary UG program, that is where we can give, as UGC has mentioned, minimum nine credits that you can go for it. Now, suppose you take a UG program in life sciences, so you will be having uh, the total credits distributed to the core courses that is botany, zoology, human biology disciplines that it will be distributed with. It. So you can take uh, different disciplines. Apart from this, you can uh, go for other programs like you know management courses or the uh, commerce courses or the arts courses. So that is what is called multidisciplinary, right? Where you can take the courses from the other discipline, right? And then now when you are talking about the minimum number of credits, I told you UGC has given 120 as minimum. And for honors, it has given 160 as minimum. But your university, your autonomous college want to go beyond 120 because they have given only the minimum. They have not given the maximum. Now, whatever for your program, the minimum, apart from minimum, if you want to go for more number of credits, like suppose if I want to give an example, the Uspania University uh, gives up to 150 credits. We can go for the general programs. The three-year program, we can go up to 150 right so you can take or you can get the approval from your board of studies and academic council and the governing body for whatever uh, the credits that you want for your interdisciplinary or multidisciplinary or double major you can take a decision with your statutory borders taking into minimum things into consideration given given by ugc now let us talk about the credit hours right now, as I told you, every semester, minimum 15 weeks you need to have per semester. Right? Now, when you're trying to give credits, now for every co uh, course that you're offering, you can have only a lecture component, a lecture and a tutorial component you can have. 
you can have a lecture or a practical component you can have lecture tutorial and practical component or only a practical component so when you provide the courses you can have any of these things right so depending upon the requirement for that particular uh, course you can go for this type of components right now when i talk one credit it means one hour lecture per week so if we talk about uh, 15 uh, no uh, weeks duration suppose there is a three credit it means 3 into 15 45 hours of teaching you need to do then one credit is also equal to one tutorial suppose you are having one tutorial one lecture and one tutorial so one tutorial is equal to one credit of that is one hour of engagement per week you suppose you want to speak from the in terms of practical right so you need to have two hour of engagement in practical either in a lab work or a community engagement or services or a field work that is treated as one credit and then when you talk from the internship point of view seminars point of view field work point of view project point of view you can give two hours engagement per week as one credit right so this is the terminology related to credits now uh, as per ugc it has given a minimum credits for the major minor and other courses that are there now when you talk from the major and minor courses which are discipline specific courses you can have four credits or as appropriate you can also go for five credits also but um, ugc has given us four credits as appropriate right and then if you want to have a practical component into added to that you can add one or two credits it can be allotted to tutorials or practicals too in your major and minor courses then if you are going for multidisciplinary ability enhancement courses and that is skill enhancement categories you need to go for three credits or whatever is appropriate for your program you can go for but ugc has given us three credits for these things now what are these ability enhancement courses and skill enhancement courses we shall be discussing in the further slides coming to the value added courses now what are these value added courses in the further slides i'll be discussing now these value added courses or summer internship or apprenticeship or community outreach programs you can have two credits or whatever is appropriate for your program you can have and finally a research project you can go with it 12 credits you can go with it because it's a honors where we are going exclusively for dissertation in the final year you can go for 12 credit now let us see uh, the eligibility for these ug programs senior secondary school leaving certificate or higher secondary uh, that is 12th grade yes uh, ma'am the credit slide which you had shown after that there was no division uh, of the credits which one ma'am this uh, in which you had shown one hour is equal to one credit yes ma'am after that you had said something about three to four credit or five maximum uh, that see. slide was not visible ma'am sorry okay. this one you're talking this is the slide which i'm talking about you know, the the one which was before this which said one credit is equal to one, one hour two. yes ma'am after that you said ma maximum four to five credits can be taken uh, yes this is the one this is the one okay. this is the one thank which you. i'm talking you, about thanks. yeah so where i to, spoke to you about major and minor here you can go for four credits for major and minor courses you can go up to four courses or whichever is appropriate because ugc has given us four credits and then it has taken as four credits. i'll be showing you the ugc structure with all the courses in that so that you'll get the idea there they have taken for major and minor courses four credits and then if you want to add practical into that particular course major or minor you can add up to one to two credits you can allot to tutorials and practicals this is what i was speaking to you just now okay now let me go to the further thing i was talking to the eligibility condition now in eligibility condition as we go with the intermediate and the sec senior secondary school or higher secondary are eligible for it or any equivalent stage of education corresponding level four are eligible for it right now let me focus on now we are speaking about outcome based education now when we are trying to have a program structure which i'll be showing to you in the further slides now for this what the higher education need to focus on the outcomes now the first type is the learning outcome which is 
uh, related to the discipline or interdisciplinary areas of learning. So you can have this type of graduate attributes where a particular graduate need to acquire the knowledge in that particular discipline or interdisciplinary paper or multidisciplinary paper where you can mention about the discipline that you are having in the program that you are going to offer. So this is this outcome is related to the discipline, interdiscipline or multidiscipline, the knowledge, the skills, the abilities that they need to acquire. Now, second type of learning outcome is generic learning outcomes, where every program need to see that they comply with it, which is given by UGC. UGC has given 16 different type of generic learning outcomes. The first type is a complex problem solving, where we need to see that a graduate is going to acquire how to uh, solve any problem, complex problem, whether it is a familiar or not familiar in a real life situation, what, what they are going to face and how they are going to apply whatever knowledge that they have gained uh, during the uh, course of their program of the study, that particular knowledge to resolve that or solve that problem. Right. The second one is a critical thinking where they need to know how to apply the knowledge when situations are not given, how to assume certain things and how they can analyze. Like, you know, you can give a case study situation based method where they can critically think about it. Right. The third one is the creativity that is out of box thinking. Right. Where you need to uh, make uh, the graduates understand that how they can think not in a routine way, but in an innovative way. So what are the things that you need to incorporate in your curriculum where they can think creatively and communication skills? That is the how they are going to yes uh, read, write, uh, then speak. Right. So how they are going to use their skills in order to in the uh, no, uh, course of the curriculum, how we need to equip the students with these communication skills. Right. And then the analytical thinking skills, research related skills. Co coordinating and collaborating with others, leadership qualities, how we are going to develop in them, and then learning how to learn the skill. That is nothing but lifelong learning, how you are going to inculcate in them. Digital and technological skills, this is what latest thing that we want our students to equip with. Because even we want our Divyang students also to learn how to access the uh, no, material using the technology. So we need to equip them for using these things. Then multicultural competence and inclusive spirit, value inculcation, then autonomy, responsibility, and accountability. We need to teach them because when they go to uh, their, uh, when they get employed, right? Now they should, if they are going to be in the middle level or higher level when they uh, go for that, they should know how to take the autonomy, how and how to feel responsible for whatever freedom is given to them, and make and how they should be accountable to the higher ups. So we need to teach them. And then environmental awareness, as I told you, environmental education is mandatory, right? And then community engagement and service, this also should be an integral part of the program, mandatory. And empathy. Now, these are the 16 generic learning outcomes which UGC is uh, specifying where all the programs need to have these things, right? Now, uh, I told you about the components in the earlier slides. Uh, as I told you, disciplinary or interdisciplinary, that is major, should be of 60 credits when you go for a three-year program, and it should be of 80 credits minimum when you go for a four-year program. And this discipline or interdiscipline major, it uh, helps the students to understand in depth about that particular subject. Now, if you want the students to change the major, they can change after the second semester. You can give them the option. Because after he gets exposed enough to various types of disciplines, he would like to change the discipline. We can give them the option after the first year, right? And advanced level disciplinary or interdisciplinary course, right? A course in research methodology you can give in the seventh semester. And also, as we have discussed, a project and dissertation where the students are allowed to do in the fourth year, right? So seventh and eighth semester will be focused on that.
And the final semester should be devoted exclusively to seminar pr presentation. This is I'm speaking about the four year program where the final semester where we should focus on presentations, preparation, submission of project report. And then they need to, uh, they can do the project either on the disciplinary program or any interdisciplinary topic that they can take. They can do the project on that or research on that. Then coming to the disciplinary and interdisciplinary minor if they want to take, which carries 12 credits if we are going for a three-year and 16 credits if we are going for the uh, four-year program. Now, we need to give an option to the students to choose uh, the courses from discipline and interdiscipline minor and also skill-based courses which are related to vocational education also you can give them because why uh, vocational education has also been promoted by UGC because when they uh, complete the program, uh, it gives them the employability opportunities immediately, right? Like a beautician course or you can a tailoring course or a, a, no, uh, where they can you know, immediately have their own uh, no, uh, thing where they can become an entrepreneur and they can do that. That is the reason UGC is uh, no, uh, uh, pre, uh, no, insisting on skill-based courses and it has also come out with guidelines on skill-based vocational education program like a certificate program or one year diploma also it has come up with it so that to enhance the employability uh, quotient and then students here they need to take sufficient number of courses in the discipline because the minimum number of courses which the UGC has mentioned as I told you 60 um, no credits have to be there when they go for a three-year program in the majors right and then student may declare the choice of minor and vocational stream at the end of the second semester as i told you they can go for a change also whatever they're chosen they can we can offer the minus after the uh, no uh, the uh, two semesters too depending upon the program you can go with it but ugc has given a minimum basic structure which uh, it becomes easy for us to start with that minimum basic structure and then uh, go on as we uh, keep learning more about it then, when, as I told you, uh, vocational education training, uh, which can be of 12 uh, credits, and which is three year and 16 credits for four years. And this uh, uh, vocational training should be an integral part because we are trying to impart skills through theory and practice. So that is a practical component we are going to incorporate because, as I told you, they should find a job, right? So if they exit uh, the program immediately, uh, if they are not getting placed when they are there, within when they are uh, no, uh, in the fourth year then uh, no with this uh, vocational education and training they'll be able to get that that is a main uh, no uh, 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 why ugc of, is thinking to introduce this vocational education and then the courses from the other disciplines which i told you multidiscipline should be of nine credits minimum as per ugc and then uh, all the ug students uh, as per ugc they are required to undergo three introductory level courses relating to the broad disciplines, right? Which we'll be uh, seeing uh, in the further slides. And these courses are intended, why? To broaden the intellectual experience because not only in one area, they will be having, because when you go uh, get employed in a particular organization, it's not one area you should know. You should have an uh, understanding about different areas to understand uh, get a comprehensive view of the things that are happening in the organization so to broaden this that is the reason ugc is mentioning to have this multidisciplinary courses and ugc also has mentioned that those courses which the student have taken at the higher secondary level they should not repeat them right in their major and minor in the multidisciplinary courses they should not repeat they should do something different because already they have done in higher education, uh, higher secondary level, they need not repeat them here. And then you can have this multidisciplinary in natural and physical sciences, like they have given various uh, you know, uh, uh, subjects like biology, botany, zoology, you can offer uh, from these. Uh, suppose you are having life sciences in your college, you can offer uh, the multidisciplinary course from these areas. Or a person studying from a BA background, can be offered mathematics, statistics, and computer applications like SPSS, Tally, Python, all these things they can be offered as a multidisciplinary courses. You can also offer in journalism, mass media, and communication, like uh, which comes under library information and media sciences.
Then commerce and management department can offer to the other department, business management basics, accountancy basics, finance, fin about a financial institution or fintech. They can offer this to the other departments. Similarly, humanities and social sciences, they can offer communication and media, anthropology, history, literature, creative writing, philosophy. They can offer this to the uh, other departments. So uh, the interdisciplinary subjects, uh, you can have like cognitive science, environmental science, gender studies, global environment. See the different papers which the UGC has given so that we can have an understanding about what are the multidisciplinary papers and what are the interdisciplinary papers that we can have. Yes, within the uh, particular program, it has given uh, certain uh, examples like they have mentioned certain courses, right? Now, ability enhancement courses are uh, courses which are related to modern Indian languages like Hindi, Arabic, Sanskrit. These are the modern Indian languages. And English languages are taken together as ability enhancement uh, courses because these courses focus on language and communication skills. And UGC has mentioned that minimum eight credits to be given to these courses. Because these courses emphasize on the communication skills, enhancing the communication skills. And how do uh, we do that when we are teaching this ability enhancement courses? We need to make the students to participate in various dis uh, discussions and debates so that they can enhance those skills. Now, coming to the skill enhancement courses, which UGC has given that minimum nine credits need to be given to the skill enhancement courses. Because these skill enhancement courses helps the individual to have hands-on experiences and then they can enhance the employability of the students when we give the skill enhancement courses. Mostly they should be practical oriented courses, these skill enhancement courses, because we will be helping the students to get employed faster when we try to impart that type of practical skills in the students. And then the institution can design the courses as per the student needs and as per the availability of resources that are available in the particular HEIs, that is higher education institutions. Then coming to the value added courses, which UGC has mentioned that you can go up to six to eight credits, which is common to all the UG students. Now, even the um, Indian knowledge uh, system, right, where you can have uh, the value added courses related to understanding India, that is historical perspective, those policies we can have related to national development, then constitutional values, fundamental duties, Indian constitution, then India's freedom struggle related to that you can have. India's freedom struggle related to that. And then Indian knowledge systems, which I told you, you can have related to that. Then environmental science where you can, as I already explained to you, what the environmental education should consist of, the various areas. So you can have related to environmental education. You can have related to digital and technological thing like artificial intelligence, 3D machining, big data analysis, machine learning. So uh, drone technologies, deep learning. Now, why uh, UGC is insisting to have these value added courses? Because they want students to learn this so that they can apply in health, environment, and sustainable living in future. So when we teach the students in these things, then we will be able to, because future is about these technologies. So we need to train the students in these areas, right? And then health and wellness, yoga education, you can have sports and fitness. In these areas also, you can have the value added courses. So uh, apart from the courses that are there adding value to the existing thing you can have in this different areas also value added courses as mentioned by U UGC. So HEIs can come out with innovative value added courses related to their discipline. They can think that for this discipline, this type of value added courses you can have in that way you can frame you can uh, the value added courses program wise you can have that or if you want a common across all the UG programs also you can have that. Right. And then coming to the summer internship. Now, summer internship can be taken by the students in local industries, in business organization, in health related areas. Also, they can have they can get themselves employed in local governments also like panchayat municipalities. Also, they can get employed there to learn about the system. Right. And the parliament or elected representatives under them also, they can do this uh, internship. In media also, they can do 
under the artists also they can do this internship because they can learn art creative art under the craftsmen also they can do this internship so there's no particular place where you have to do internship only in this they can do anything where the area of their interest and learn the practical side because this should help them to get employed anything whatever they're learning it should further their employability in that way the students need to uh, choose their internship area and as i told you a condition when a student want to exit after two semesters right where we are giving a certificate it is mandatory that student need to undergo four credit internship and during the summer intern, they have to do this. Then only they're going to get a certificate, right? UG certificate they're going to get after one year. This condition is mandatory, right? And then uh, when you talk about community engagement and service, as I told you, in summer, you can send the students so that uh, they go and learn in the community what problems, social and economic problems they have. And they can, it can be a part of their major or minor course, what they're doing, you can give a mini project sort of thing for that so that they can get and engage themselves in that. And field-based learning, a uh, minor project you can uh, make the students to do in the particular course so that they understand the socio-economic issues. And then the other activities also you can encourage, that is NCC and then adult education literacy initiatives and mentoring the school students. Yeah. That also you can encourage these activities and give them the credits for that. And any other activities which uh, we are making the students to uh, know, uh, give back to the society, contribute to society, those activities, you can give them the credits. Now, as I told you, awarding UG certificate and UG diploma and, uh, and degrees when they move from one year to another year, as I discussed with you, so UG certificate, 40 credits they need to have that with the summer vacation that is summer vacation where they need to do the uh, uh, internship during the summer vacation, four credits internship. Similarly, UG diploma, if they have to take after the second year, they need to have minimum 80 credits they should have done and four credits in summer. And three-year degree, if we have to give 120 credits minimum, they should be uh, doing it. The program should have that 120 credits. And then they should also uh, see that uh, uh, no, uh, the major discipline, at least 50% of the courses should be of major discipline. Then here they are not specifying anything about internship, but for first and second, that is certificate and diploma, they are giving that. If you're going for honors, yes, here you have an internship also, and then 160 credits you need to have. If you're going for honors with research, mandatory, you have to do a research project. Right. If you are not willing to do a research project, as I told you, you have to do 12 credits worth three courses you have to do. And as I told you, you are having an exit and entry, but within seven years, they need to complete their degree. When you exit and when you are re-entering into the degree program anytime, but within seven years, the total degree has to be completed. So which you have to complete in four years, so we are giving, when you are going, exiting and entering, you are giving an option where another three years has been added. So, But within that, you need to complete. Otherwise, they need to redo their degree. So this is the basic uh, structure UGC has given. So here, if you see the first semester, 20 credits they have given. And they have given here uh, discipline-specific courses, that is 100 level. What are these levels? I'll just tell you about these levels and get back to the slide again. Now, they have given certain codes for that. These levels are there. 0 to 99, they are called as prerequisite courses, like a bridge courses which we talk. Now, UGC is giving a terminology called as prerequisite courses, they are telling that, right? Which are necessary for them to do the uh, courses which are offered in the first year. So they are called prerequisite courses. So you can make it mandatory that students need to undergo this bridge courses. Pass or fail, you can give. Right. But you have to see that they acquire the knowledge about this courses, bridge courses before they enter into the first semester, before they do the first semester courses. Now, first semester, 100 to 199 code has been given. They are called as foundational inter introductory courses. Second, uh, that is second semester intermediate level. They are, they are given a code of 200 to 299. 
that is 200 level it is called second year right third year it is called as higher level courses 300 to 399 code are given for those courses you need to uh, number the courses from 300 to 399 fourth year course right you are numbering from 400 to 499 they are advanced courses where we have research projects training using the software where is the four year program degree program now fifth level 500 level is nothing but where a student completes the four year degree and goes to the first year master degree right uh, for a two year master degree program 500 level then coming to the 600 level the second year of the master degree or you may be having a one year master degree when you have one year master degree you have to have the code from 600 onwards 600 to 699 and then for doctoral students the courses the code should be from 700 to 799 and above so these are the levels of courses which UGC has given. Now I'll get back to the structure where they are mentioned of 100 level, 200 level, 300 level, 400 level. So first year, second year, third year, and 400. So that type of courses we need to offer, that level of courses we need to offer at each of these semesters. So you can see discipline-specific courses, minor courses they have given, interdisciplinary courses ability enhancement courses skill enhancement courses common value added courses you can see discipline specific courses core courses are there in all the eight semesters when you're going for the four-year degree minor courses you can have all the eight semesters whereas if you see interdisciplinary courses you can have only in three semesters only right and then as per ugc right their basic structure ability enhancement courses they are mentioning that you can go up to four semesters where it consists of modern indian languages and as well as english and then skill enhancement courses that you can have it in up to third semester you can have it the skill enhancement courses internship if you want you can have it in the fifth semester if you're going for a three-year degree you can have an internship in the fifth semester right this is also treated as a skill enhancement course and as i told you if you are going to leave in the after first year you need to have mandatory internship four credits and after, if you leave after second year you have to have mandatory internship four credits and if your students want if you want to enhance your employability of the students you can have an internship in your sem5 right so this is as per the ugc then eighth semester uh, if you go for a four year degree a research project or dissertation that is treated under the skill enhancement courses right so if you see here you have every semester you are having 20 20 credits right so you have for six semesters 2020 that is 120 credits if you are a three-year degree and then if you are a four-year four degree you have 20 into 8 that is 160 credits these are the minimum credits for a program we need to have as per UGC, right? So they have also mentioned a note telling that only the minimum total number of credits in each semester is indicated. This is what I do. And then HEIs can decide the number of credits for each course, major, minor, to fulfill the minimum number of credits requirements, right? So you can have the number of credits also can be increased as per your uh, university as per your institution you can go with it right minor courses can be in the third uh, year that is three 300 level you can have minor courses which is having 50 percentage of total credits from minor should be secured in the relevant subject right and another 50 percent should be secured in any other discipline but when you're going for a minor 50 percent of credit should be from the discipline that you're doing another 50 percent can be of any discipline Students are not allowed to take the same courses as I told you. Whatever they have taken in the 12th class, they cannot take it here. When we are talking about multidisciplinary or interdisciplinary, you cannot take it the same thing because we are encouraging the student to have dif different areas. Then 40% of the credits can be acquired through the online courses as per UGC. Suppose you are not having a faculty to teach a respective course you can tell the students uh, yes to do the course online like swim or any MOOCs 
as per the whatever the rules regulations are there as per the institution he can do it so for up to 40 percent they can do the credits online and eighth semester they can have a seminar based core major they can have yes and then students may be encouraged to enroll the different nss and ncc activities they can take uh, as the value added courses also they can go for that you can have as a non credit based courses also you can go for it right as for the norms or whatever your bos man um, board of studies and academic council you can get it ratified but they should be encouraged to do such type of activities now ugc has given a grading table this way o a plus a b plus b c these are the for different grade points that UGC has given the minimum thing. Again, you can go, uh, you can also uh, no, uh, go as per university, whatever your university, but this is as per UGC, right? We can discuss in your academic council and then you can finalize the grading. And then learning assessment, how we are going to do? Priority should be given for formative internal continuous assessment. They should be done in a different way. UGC is mentioning that the class tests can be conducted, midterm, mid semester exams can be conducted, homeworks can be given so that you continuously can assess them. And when you give the uh, no a test, it can be viva vos or a computerized adaptive assessment. And you can go for mini projects, you can go for a closed book or open book test, a time constraint examination, problem-based assignments you can give. You can ask them to uh, observation book, you can make them to do that. So whatever they observe, and then you can assess them. Or uh, MCQs also, it is encouraging to have MCQs. So in that way, you can have uh, internal assessments so that uh, the students is assessed on a regular basis, not in a routine way, right? So this is what, and then, the SGPA calculation or computation also the UGC has given. So you can see that how credits per course they have given and then they are multiplied with the grade point, what they get based upon the letter grade. And you have total in the last column, if you see the total marks divided by the total credits of that semester, you'll get a semester grade point average, right? And then if you want to go for a cumulative grade point average, Take SGPAs of all the semesters and take the uh, total credits of all the semesters. You uh, multiply them and divide by total credits for that particular program. Here you can get the SGPA calculation. right? So suppose the students have already en enrolled into a three-year program. They are also eligible to pursue a four-year program if you introduced. Providing some bridge courses and online courses, you can allow them to uh, transfer to this curriculum and credit based framework for undergraduate programs. So you can help them to transfer in that way. So I've taken the reference of the guidelines given by UGC, the total thing. And this is what. So I end my session. I hope uh, I was able to share my knowledge related to the curriculum. Vasanti, ma'am? Yes, ma'am. Yes, I've done. If anybody has any questions or something, uh, they can ask. Or otherwise. Dear participants, if any queries, please ask. Hello, good evening, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Anshu. Anshu Rani. Yes, Anshu Rani. There is no queries, ma'am, but the uh, lecture was very informative for us. Uh, you. It, you have told about uh, something environmental uh, biology because I'm assistant professor of environmental biology. Oh, very so nice. I get, yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So I get all these things. Thank so you it's so now much, it is mandatory now environmental education and you know which areas that they have to give. So you can insist upon in your uh, higher education institution now. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So your value Thanks. has been increased now. Yes, ma'am. Thank you so much, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Shall we end it? Oh. Yes, ma'am. I hope there is no worry. We shall move to the end of session. Thank you so much, Professor Anita, oh, ma'am, for your participation. Yeah. Dear participants, we would like to thank every one of you patients listening and active participation. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you once again.